Um, there's this insanely, insanely, insanely good book called The One Minute Manager. And it, it's all about The One Minute Manager. It is so, it's just insane. And it's all about this idea of using positivity and, and, and growth mindsets and growth mentalities um, and these connections with people and these relationships and these positive emotions to have huge, huge, huge impacts and have tons and tons and tons of collaboration and teamwork and success and growth. It's so, so, so powerful, so amazing because it focuses on this praise, it focuses on this positivity, it focuses on this happy, happy growth energy and it literally changes absolutely everything. It's so powerful and it all comes from this idea Idea that you must, 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 must master positivity and praise. Um, so really, really, really good resource. The One Minute Manager. If uh, if you're if you're like want to go out there and crush it and really lead teams and lead groups, it's just really, really good. So he, he goes through this process and he, and he says, look, it's not a big deal. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, and then what's cool is that he finds this new story. Okay, and you know, among many clippings in this story, no one's ever really gonna know exactly. Uh, what happens, but, but Carnegie tell, retells it, why? Because it's so, 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 so powerful, um, and it's just insane. It, it, this was like a big perspective shift for me when I heard this, and I think it, it might be kinda, kinda one for you too. Um, so according to this silly story, at the end of a, a heavy day's work, right, a farm woman, you know, she comes home, um, and she sits, she's got like, you know, all these men sitting at her kitchen table. Um, and, and she gives them a humongous pile of hay. Just plops down a huge pile of hay on the table. And these people, you know, these guys are like, dude, are you freaking like crazy? Like, what the heck, man? Um, and they are like asking if she's berserk. And she's like, oh, you guys noticed. You know, I've been cooking for you guys for like 20 year and uh, all that time never have I heard a single word that let me know you weren't just eating hay never did any of these men give her praise never did any of them give her a never did they give her a feeling of significance and so like she felt like she was just feeding them hay day after day after day after day because they never felt appreciated. So like, oh my God, like this will change everything. It'll change the way that people treat you. It'll change the way that you get results. It'll change the way um, that individuals like connect with you. Um, and it's this very, very simple yet profound, profound, profound idea of just making people feel important. Um, and this is like exactly what I do, like all the freaking time. Um, in every social aspect, and especially like with lunch and, and, and with um, like cafeterias and staff, like these are people that I'm seeing like on a day-to-day -day basis that are always, always, always working and are constantly like barraged by students, uh, just trying to get food all over the place uh, and eat. And like all I do is, is just give a little bit of praise, a little bit of significance and just connect with them um, and say, wow, great job. And remember their names and care about them. And, um, and what's that mean? Well, first of all, it means you get better service, but more importantly, like you get treatment that's different from everybody else. Like this morning I had a conference uh, at nine and I really wanted to like eat breakfast. Um, and like the breakfast place opened at nine. And so like I'm, I'm walking up and I'm, I'm like super, super nice to all the managers and all the staff and all the chefs all the time. So they all look at me and they know me. Like they know me by name and we're like a first name basis. And they open up early. And like, there are probably like seven or 10 people just standing around waiting to eat. And they're all like watching this happen. And like none of them are getting served, because why? Because they never added value to this relationship. They never put the time in to give to the chef, to give them a feeling of importance and to build up this base uh, of a relationship that will lead to future dividends, right? Um, and, and future like relationship asset payments, right? Like these connections are worth so, 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 so much. Um, and so like these guys stand in front of everyone and they just like make my breakfast and let me check out before they open because they, they care. They have a connection and they have like an, they, like they care about me. Uh, and like, so think about like, how can you apply this? How can you make like the people in your life that you see on a constant basis that have a control and have an influence over the quality of your life? How can you befriend them and make them care about you so that they will treat you differently than literally every other person that they serve? Like how cool would that be? How like awesome would it be? So like the only person that walks into an elevator, the only person that walks into a cafeteria or some public service station that like the, the workers actually care about or that your employees, the only boss that your employees actually like, um, or the only leader that like your followers actually dedicate their time. Like this one concept of giving praise and significance to others will literally change absolutely everything. And it is so powerful, so insane, and so crazy. Um, so cannot recommend it enough. 
Um, it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's so great. Um, and it, it changed everything for me and for some people I know. You got that down, you, you understand. Like if you look at like the number one cause of like runaway housewives and divorces, um, and it, it, it kind of all stems down to one reason and that one reason is a lack of appreciation. Um, and same, like they did a whole study for this, whole study of runaway wives, runaway husbands. It's all because of a lack of appreciation, a lack of significance, a lack of importance. Um, and it's just so, so crazy because, you know, people like take the, take their spouses for granted and we never let them know how much we appreciate them. How much you appreciate somebody, like it all comes and shows in everything that you do. And so like the instant that you can share with people how much you care about them and like the impact that they have on your life, everything changes because they, they understand like you care and that you think they are important. You appreciate the work that they do, which is like the coolest thing ever. Uh, a member uh, of one of Dale's Carnegie's classes like came and, and told her about a request uh, this wife had. And, and this, uh, this comes back to this idea of positivity and negativity. And it's so, so, so powerful. So this, this, this wife came up to him and they're in their house and she asked her husband to name uh, what, six things? Uh, yeah, six things that he believes that she could do. She asked him to name six things that she could do to be a better wife and to be better, um, better woman. And she's doing this with like a whole group of people at her church, right? Um, so all these people at the church, they all go to their, their husbands and they ask like six things, six improvements that they, they could make um, to, to, to be better, right? Become a better wife. Um, and he was really surprised by this request and it would have literally taken him, him like the snap of a finger to come up with a huge, 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 huge list of things that he would change about his wife. Like he could come up with basically like a thousand things. Um, but he realized that that was not the right thing to do. And he said, let me think about it and I'll get back to you in the morning. Um, because he realized that like if he focused on this negativity and he said things that were actually wrong and he like criticized her, even if it was constructive, even if she literally asked for the criticism, this criticism is so negative and so destructive that it would destroy the relationships they have with one another and crush their connection. And so he wakes up early in the morning and he goes over to the floors before his wife wakes up. Um, and then he goes to work and, and he comes back at the end of the day and he has the floors delivered to his home six beautiful red roses to his wife and a note that says I can't think of six things I would change about you I love you the way you are all he does is focus on giving praise and he gives these flowers to his wife he gets all these flowers sent to his wife um, you know six flowers right um, he comes home that night and what do you think happens do you think she says oh I can't believe you did that I want you to criticize me no Oh, nobody wants to be criticized. She gives him the sweetest giant hug ever, and she was in tears. Why? Because he didn't criticize her, and he praised, and he praised, and he praised. And so she goes back to her church group, and she tells everybody about this, and everybody thinks that this guy is the coolest husband ever, and he's the best person ever. And that's when he realized that this most considerate thing he ever did showcased the insane, 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 insane power of appreciation. And if you can understand this, if you can get this down, like it will change absolutely everything. All aspects uh, of whatever it is you do, right? And it's just so, so, so huge, so powerful. Um, and it's just awesome, man. It's just so great. Um, so like, you look at like other groups, right? Other people. Um, Florence Ziegfeld, right? One of the most spectacular producers, like who was, who was like ever on Broadway. He gained his reputation by his subtle ability to glorify the American girl, to make other people feel better, to praise people better than anybody else. And people, you know, time after time, you would have like these drab women come up to a stage and he would make them look absolutely amazing and super seductive and sexy and great uh, by simply like sort of, you know, emphasizing their natural selves. But kind of more importantly is he would appreciate who they were. And because of this appreciation, he would boost their confidence and this confidence is so key like literally like how attractive you are and like I, I, like i've kind of gone through this process like like nobody used to like me right now i have like like no attraction whatsoever uh but as my confidence came up and up and up and up all of a sudden like it was like, sh like surrounded by women like all the time and it's so crazy but like as you have this overarching long-term goal like like you develop and like think of a rich course like once you start to get that you start to pursue that passion you start to pursue the path of your life and you start to go in the direction that you desire like all of a sudden like 
people and, and women and people that want to work for you will literally just like flow into your life because they see you on a purpose and they identify with you and they want to surround themselves with strong, core, centered individuals who have a mission. Literally, like I walk into this one place to get um, some paperwork done so that I get some some cash cash money from some of my clients and the guy at the department is running the paperwork like wants me to hire him because like I tell him a little bit about one of the like about Monero's and he's like oh cool dude can I come work for you instead of doing this like that's the sort of people you'll attract in your life as you start to have ridiculously high amounts of confidence like AJ was one of the coolest people ever right and it all stems from this this uh, this strategy that Florence Ziegfeld uses where he would give a huge 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 amount of praise and tell them how tell this woman how amazing they were and give them tons of consideration. Um, and because he made them feel more important, all of a sudden, what? His shows got ridiculously great, right? The results were a thousand times better because the individuals in the place, the actresses, the actors, they were a thousand times better. He literally paid, he raised the salary of his chorus girls from 35 bucks a week to as high as $175 a week so that he could have the best of the best and make them feel like the best of the best. And on opening night, when there were huge, huge, huge concerts, he would always be chivalrous and send telegrams to the stars and to the cast and he would deluge every chorus girl in the show with American Beauty Roses to make them feel significant. Can. Think about that, right? Like, when's the last time you sent a postcard to somebody? When's the last time you sent a rose to somebody? How important would that make them feel? I'll tell you the answer. I sent out like 20 postcards to like all of my family a couple weeks ago. And I get calls and texts and hearts and emails and, and all this stuff from all of them saying, Oh my gosh, thank you. That was the sweetest thing ever. Because nobody gives them a feeling of significance on a regular basis. And if you can do that, it will literally change all of the relationships you have and every Everyone will want to be part of your life and people will literally compete to see who can like be closest to you because you're so in demand in the relationship marketplace.